Plug in. Activate. Swap. FDR paths simplified automated migration. This demonstration provides an introduction to FDR paths and illustrates how the entire process can be controlled through the supplied ISPF panels. FDR PaaS is a fast, powerful, and easy-to-use DASD migration utility for the non-disruptive movement of ZOS disk volumes from one DASD device to another. Users or applications accessing data on a source volume can continue to do so uninterrupted during the swap process. A comprehensive simulation feature automatically identifies any pre-migration issues on source volumes, such as VTOC or VVDS errors. After a swap has completed, all of the data from the source volume is located on the target device, and all user and application access to the data is automatically and transparently switched to that new device. The original source volume is placed offline. From there, it can be decommissioned or reassigned as required. Although FDR paths can move individual disks, its primary purpose is to assist with the non-disruptive migration of large numbers of disks or an entire DASD controller, as is usually required when installing new disk hardware. FDR paths can also be used for the ad hoc relocation of individual or groups of disk volumes, perhaps for general data movement and housekeeping, or for addressing I.O. load balancing issues. FDR PaaS offers an efficient, safe, and fast way of relocating data from any ZOS disk device to another. On average, FDR PaaS can swap a 3390-3 to a new DASD device in less than three minutes. For greater performance, especially when relocating entire DASD subsystems, multiple concurrent FDR PaaS swaps can be initiated. With FDR PaaS, you can easily move hundreds of disk volumes in just a few hours. The swap can occur in a single DASD subsystem where both the source and target are in the same subsystem or across subsystems where the source is in one subsystem and the target is located in another. The source volume can be accessible either via a single LPAR or across multiple LPARs in a shared DASD complex or SISPLEX. Special FDR PaaS monitor tasks ensure that all LPARs which have access to the source volume participate in the swap process. DASD subsystems from all major hardware vendors are supported, and the swap process can operate across vendor platforms, easing the conversion or migration from one vendor's subsystem to another. FDR PaaS can swap almost any ZOS DASD volume, including the SIS res, other system volumes such as checkpoint and spool volumes, and also volumes containing ICF catalogs. It can also swap SMS managed volumes. CICS volumes, and volumes containing system-related files, such as your RACF database or tape management system catalog. FDR PaaS can swap to a disk of equal or higher capacity. For example, you can move a 3390 Model 27 to a Model 54. FDR PaaS will automatically update the VTOC and VTOC index on the target device to reflect the additional capacity as free space. If you have a large number of small disks to relocate to a smaller set of larger disks, for example 3390 Model 9s onto 3390 Model 27s, or perhaps across to EAVs, FDR PaaS's sister product, FDR Move, can be used in conjunction with FDR PaaS to provide a near non-disruptive migration and consolidation of your data onto the larger disks. See the FDR Move web demo for more details. Once you've plugged in and activated your new DASD hardware, the FDR PaaS ISPF panels can be used to set up and drive the non-disruptive migration of your data. Let's take a closer look at the process. The FDR PaaS ISPF panels are accessed through option P of the main FDR panel. This panel is used to set up, initiate, and control the entire FDR PaaS process. The pull-down menu reveals all of the main FDR PaaS commands. By pressing Enter in the main panel, FDR PaaS checks to see if there are any swaps already in progress. In our example, there are a couple of swap tasks already active. 
as well as monitoring active swaps. This main panel can also be used to display one or more of the disk devices currently online to this LPAR. As you can see, you can specify such things as the Volseer, Unit Address, SSID, Control Unit ID, or SMS Storage Group as the selection criteria for which disks are to be displayed. In our example, we want to see all disk volumes belonging to SSID 9970. And in this example, we want to see all disk volumes attached to control units that have a serial number beginning with LR22. The resulting display will look like this. As you can see, it shows the first of a range of disks attached to the control unit with a serial number of LR221. Notice that the other selection columns, such as Volseer, Unit Address, and SSID, have all been filled in with the appropriate information. The inactive value in the status column shows that no current FDRPAS activity is taking place on these disk volumes. The Swap to Offline Unit column is where you specify the target unit device address for each source disk that you want to swap. Although it is possible to manually enter a target address for each disk, a quicker and easier way to allocate targets is illustrated here. The source disks on unit addresses beginning with 22 need to be swapped across to the corresponding units on addresses beginning with 7. So we've just entered 7 and an asterisk for the first disk in the display. After pressing Enter, you can now see that the corresponding target offline unit addresses have all been automatically filled in. This illustrates a very simple yet effective way of pairing up hundreds or even thousands of target and source volumes with just a few keystrokes. In our example, some additional information has also been displayed to assist in the swap process. Three of the generated target addresses are not currently available, and there are also some differences in sizes between three of the source disks and their generated targets. In these situations, you can simply overtype the generated target value, as we've done here by replacing the default 72EE with an alternative value of 72EF. Once you have your entire source and target disks paired up, the Options command allows you to display all of the options that can be set to control FDRPAS operations. On the left-hand side of this first section of the Options panel, you can see the main options for controlling the swap process. For example, Larger Size, which we've set to OK to allow FDRPAS to swap a source disk to a larger target device. And in this section of the Options panel, we are defining the CPU addresses of the other LPARs where an FDRPAS monitor task will be started prior to the swap process being run for real. Monitor tasks are required if the source disk is accessible from LPARs other than where the swap process will be taking place. Having built the target and source pairs and having adjusted the required FDRPAS options, we can run a SIM swap mon which will simulate the swap process before we run it for real. The first portion of the JCL is shown here. As you can see, we are going to run FDRPAS with the SIM swap mon command. Options such as larger size equals OK then follow. Note also that we have check source equals yes coded, which instructs the simulation process to check and report on any VTOC or VVDS errors on the source disks which can then be investigated and resolved before the swap is run for real. After the options, we then have mount statements for each of our source and target disk pairs that we set up in the main panel. We have a vol equals for each source and a swap unit equals identifying its target. Further down the generated JCL, we have one or more separate steps which execute FDRPAS monitor commands which will be routed through to the other LPARs that have access to the source volumes. Shown here is an example of what the FDRPAS panel will look like after the SIM swap mon job has been submitted. At this point we have the opportunity to correct any conditions that may prevent the real swap process from running successfully. In our example, several of the designated target disks are not offline, which is a default requirement of the swap process. Depending on the circumstance, we might opt to place those volumes offline or perhaps alter the target addresses to a different set of volumes. 
Once we've run a SIM swap mon and have all the source and target volumes paired up and all the monitor tasks up and running on any other LPARs that need to participate in the swap, we are then ready to run the non-disruptive swap process for real. This is achieved with the swap option on the command panel. Alternatively, individual swaps can be initiated from the main panel by typing swap into any one of the command lines or by typing swap in the main command. You can then view the progress of each swap through the main panel, which has several different display formats. The single one line per swap task format is shown here. You can toggle around the different display formats using the PF10 and PF11 keys. Shown here is the second of the three possible formats with two lines per swap task. The additional line shows some detail on the progress of each active swap task. The third possible display format has four additional lines showing yet more detail of each swap. As well as initiating and monitoring swap tasks, the FDRPAS main panel can also be used to control those tasks. The two examples shown here illustrate tasks being suspended and aborted. FDRPAS has successfully completed a swap process. Note that the unit address, SSID, and control unit serial shown in this display are the values for the new target device where the swapped volume now resides. If you want to know about previously completed swap tasks, you can use the History option. Here's an example of a history report showing the swap tasks that have been run, when and where they were run, and the unit addresses of both the source and target device. As illustrated by these user experiences, FDRPAS offers a fast, simple, and automated solution for all your DASD migration needs. As illustrated in this demo, the non-disruptive swap process allows for the mass movement of large amounts of data without adversely affecting service level agreements. FDRPAS was first launched into the market in 2001 and has subsequently been used for DASD migration projects in over 1400 sites worldwide and most importantly, vendor independent. Plug in, activate, swap. FDR PAS Simplified Automated Migration. To request the Product Portfolio, Concepts and Facilities Guide, and a free no obligation trial of FDR PAS, click here.